What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Cooper Sup. Today we've got the guest, um, and this is pretty cool because, as you know, if you've been watching Cooper Sup, which you should be all the time, um, we've had a couple of different guests: uh, Kirk Cameron, JP, also Sears, um, to talk about Brave Books, which, as you guys know, I think is pretty cool. So today we've got Trent Talbot from Brave Books. We're going to talk about that. Talk about some new stuff they're doing, which is pretty exciting and cool. Trent, welcome to the show. How you doing? Thanks so much for having me, John. I'm super excited to be here. We appreciate all the support you have in our our authors on. It's been it's been great. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, it, we really had a great time chatting with a couple of the uh, the peeps, as I just said. So now, are you the founder slash owner? Yes. Uh, you're so young. I I I was expecting the owner of Brave Books to be like you know 78. <laughs> no man it's a, uh children's books is a young man's game it's it's, it's just survival <laughs> the fittest out here you got to be young and agile <laughs> that's funny yeah i had no idea so what made you decide to do uh children actually you know what we should start o or not start over but we should rewind uh, and tell people what brave books actually is in case they're joining the show now and yeah. uh, the, these poor people that haven't watched older Cooper stuff show. I don't know. I don't even know how they exist, but they're there. In case that's you, tell us what Brave Books actually is. Brave Books is a Christian children's publishing company. And we our business our business model is a little bit different. You know, we don't really sell our books through Amazon, standalone books. Our our main product that we sell is is called the Freedom Island Book Club. And it's a book of the month subscription in which you start at the beginning of this overarching narrative that we're telling with our stories and every story is set in this universe that we built called freedom Island. And we've got all sorts of fun characters, team brave, the villains like Blackheart and culture, the vulture. And our mission is to first engage the imaginations of children uh, um, really with our picture books, targeting that four to 10 range. We capture their imagination just with the universe and the great stories and every single story teaches a different biblically based foundational value that strengthens their more moral character so that because you know, that's when children's moral character is built by the age of 10 and prepares them for the world. Because, as you know, there's a lot of ideas that are floating around our culture that um, that our children need to be prepared for and they need to know truth before they go out and hear, hear these things. So that's what Brave Book's mission is. Yeah, I mean, there's no better way to do that than to tell a story, you know, which is why, I mean, even the Bible itself, of course, you know, we remember these Bible stories since we're kids, and uh, it's the best way to teach a lesson, to tell a story. People, it's like, uh, it's sort of like songs, you know, like learning your ABCs. It's a lot easier when you sing it in a song, just like it is in a story. You know, a lot of people say things like this, like, um, it's easy for us to complain about the culture, the degradation, the destruction happening in culture. Why don't we not complain? Why don't we do something about it? I feel like that's what Brave Books did. I mean, is that fair enough to say? Was there a little bit of that attitude behind it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So the story of Brave Books starts in the summer of 2020. You know, this is like peak COVID. I'm sure we can all remember what we were doing at this time because it was such just a, <laughs> COVID, a big COVID, what was that? Well, I don't even know what you're talking yeah. about, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems like it's been so long ago. Um, so I, summer 2020, late June, I was a new believer at that time, happily practicing ophthalmologist, just doing cataract surgery, treating some glaucoma, you know, having fun in, in, in my, in my ophthalmology practice, um, was <laughs> recently married and just, my wife just gave birth to our first, uh, first child, Charlotte. And, um, it's sort of like whenever you get a new car, you start to see that new car all over the highway because it's elevated in your uh, awareness. After Charlotte was born, those first few weeks were were transformative in my life because for the first time in my life, I saw the culture war on our kids everywhere I turned um, from anti-racist baby being the number one book on Amazon, the trailer for that film Cuties by Netflix. Uh, my best friend was gifted the latest Nancy Drew book, which had a trans character in it. And it and the list just goes on and on and on. Everywhere I turn, walking to Barnes and Noble, you see sort of the indoctrination table. And 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 for whatever reason, John, it just uh it just stuck with me. I could not get it out of my head. You know, I would think about it when I was treating patients. I would think about it 
in the shower. I think about it laying in bed. And, and eventually I started to think about, all right, if, if, if I wanted to try to counteract what's happening and make a difference, what would be the best way? And, and I've always believed in the power of stories. They've had an incredible effect on my life. And, and, and I just had this idea for sort of a, a new children's book publishing model with the whole book of the month and the world and, and instilling the values. And, and eventually the sort of the idea in my mind for Freedom Island and Brave Books became so cool and the adventure seemed so fun. I just couldn't, I couldn't not do it. <laughs> and I left my practice and started Brave Books and, and the Lord just blessed, um, and blessed us if if it wasn't for for the Lord's so having his having his hand on 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 us, it would have been a terrible decision because I had no idea what I was doing. And but he just he found the right pieces for our company, the right employees, and and somehow in Conroe, Texas, we've just built this amazing team. Uh, um, mar- from marketing to the storytelling to the illustrations to it just goes on and on. It's it's been in an, an unbelievable journey over the past two and a half years. Man, I didn't realize it was in 2020s. I remember thinking the first time I heard of you guys was in uh, 20, maybe 2021. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we launched in 2021. The oh, idea, okay. the idea had gotten my noggin in uh, yeah. September of 2020. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I, I thought that I was maybe late to the games. I didn't realize that it had only been going for that. That's kind of incredible because really there's not – Maybe it's just that it's a space that wasn't being filled with something. And so you guys came in and filled it. And so now in 2024, it sort of seems like, how come this wasn't happening? How? But but we can ask that about a ton of things um, that I think Christianity, I just think the church kind of forgot to care about and forgot to teach. I, I think principles of liberty, the principles of what it means to be a good citizen, the principles of what it means to actually love your neighbor and and how these principles of American freedom are derived from the Bible. Those are all sorts of things that I just think evangelicals thought weren't really important to teach. We just need to move on. We need to be in the world. And I remember probably around 2013, um, because my kids were, so my, my kids are a bit older than yours. So my kids are 21 and 18. So, you know, 2013, you're talking about 10 years ago, my daughter was a big, big reader and we go to Barnes and Noble. I'd say, go, go get whatever you want. You know? And I, I was just so naive and so dumb. I had no idea the trash. And so I started reading some of the books before she would read them. And I was just like, oh my gosh, some of these are I don't I don't want to go overboard and say they're pornographic, but they're, they're pretty close to pornographic. And these were the young readers section. So um, I just feel like it's a great thing that you guys have done. Have you found that you are filling this gap that there's a there's just like a hole there? Or is it the case that there are other people that have been doing it and I just don't know about it? Um, no, no, I think I think we're the first one to really to really go after sort of the cultural issues you know, things like sanctity of life and gender reality and um, s- some of these things, you know, and, and hit hit what's going on in our culture head on. We're, we're, we were definitely the first to do that. And I think that that just resonated a lot with parents and parents over the past five years have have been forced to you know deal with the fact that they there's there's not too many. Um, forms of entertainment for their children that they can trust. Yeah. And, and, and brave. That's our most precious commodity is the trust of the parents, you know, tr- specifically trust of Christian parents. And so um, they know at this point, they know that, and they've, they've seen enough of our stories that they, that, that they trust us. And, and I, I think that that is, that was the real need out there was, Parents needed a brand that they could trust with their children's imagination. Yes, and that is a great way to say it. I think that is exactly right. That you nailed it, and I think that Brave does that. Yeah, yeah, and so our our plan is pretty simple. Over the next ten years, it we do not want to betray that trust, and we want to keep building amazing books, TV shows, move whatever, whatever we can. Um, to 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 give parents 
you know, resources that, 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 that their children will love and, and will, will strengthen their character, build, build that morality so that by the time, you know, they're ready to, to go to school or to head off to college, they're, they're leaving just with deep roots, roots of truth. Mm, I think it's great. Hey, have you found that, uh, have you had luck with churches? as well. Like I know there's, there are parents who are, I would think, you know, passionate about this idea that would be like, yes, there's a company now doing this great service for us. And we really like it. What about churches in general, whether it's, you know, kids programming and things like that. Have, have you guys had luck with that? What have you finding there? Um, it, the response from churches, you know, it, it depends. Um, there's been some, some, I guess, sections of, of the church that that have gotten behind us and and put our books in in their you know in their uh resource libraries but um but the vast majority of our sales are straight to parents for sure okay and yeah. and we're 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 slowly building up our our different avenues of distribution whether it's straight to schools whether it's book fair route whether it's to churches um early on though it's just easiest just to go straight to parents yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay, great. And so you guys are breaking out now. So it's not uh, just books that you're doing. As you just said, you have a 10-year ten, a ten program to launch in these other things. How soon are you going to be launching into other things? And what other things are those? Well, the the next step we just announced yesterday um, that we're we're coming out with our first TV show. And it's a live action television show called Adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk. Starring Kirk Cameron and Iggy the Iguana, who's a puppet puppeted by John Kennedy, a uh, uh, Sesame Street and Muppet um, puppeteer, one of one of the best in the world. Um, and then it's uh, also have Lee Allen Baker di- from Disney's Good Luck Charlie. She was the mom, and and it's going to be incredible. It's it's going to have sort of the trusted morality of Mister Rogers' Neighborhood, but high energy, hilarious dialogue, animated stories as part of it. Um, and every episode, just like our books, every episode is going to instill those, those, uh, those biblical foundational values. So, because, um, I don't need to tell you, but the, the content out there for our kids is, is trash, you know, at, at best, it's sort of mind numbing entertainment, but what we want to do is have world-class entertainment that grips children, but also while they're being entertained, these values are being instilled and it's building that character, building that morality and to turn screen time into an opportunity to, to develop them. Mm. Are you saying that you don't think that Mr. Rogers is high energy? <laughs> it's not, it's not the most high energy show out there. It's just so unfair, man. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're such a mean person with your cowboy hat. You're, you're getting, you're getting rebellious. Oh, um, oh boy. No, it's a really, uh, I mean, that's a killer cast, a really talented cast of people. How are you able to grab that that kind of cast? Why is it that people want to work with you guys? I assume it's because they they like the message as well. Is that right? Yeah, you know, um, you there's there's so there's so many people that there's so many talented Christians, um, conservatives that that are are sick and tired of what's going on in the culture that, that are frustrated, you know, sort of operating in, in the system, you know, whether it's Hollywood or, um, or the major networks, and they're looking for opportunities to work on projects that, re- that they really believe in. And so it makes my job kind of easy. We cast a vision out there and then, and sort of, um, and, and people, talented people tend to flock to it. And, mm-hmm. and, um, And so anyway, um, that's, that's, that's the main draw for us is, is, is the fact that, that these, these talented people will finally be able to work on on projects that they can just be hundred percent passionate about. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I I think this is my opinion and I think that you certainly were probably going to (laughs) agree because of what you do. I I've been saying, I think the most important thing we could do, if you could put money into something, it would be to create platforms that are doing exactly what you guys are doing but because it fixes a lot of problems number one as i said you're not just complaining about the culture so you're not just saying this kid's tv programming is trash which it is and and i just want to 
I kind of just want to say this, even though I'm assuming our listeners all, all know this, but if you don't have kids, if you don't really keep up with kids programming because maybe your kids are in college and who knows what's going on, it is so it is so absolutely terrible. The the gender confusion, the uh, sexual revolution that they are instilling into young and not just kids. I mean, some of the, the toddlers programming is so absolutely anti-Christian. It is anti-life. It is anti-God, I think. It's anti um it's even anti-human, you know, if you think about it in a certain a certain case. It is so absolutely bad. That's worth complaining about. It's worth getting loud about. But if all we ever do is get loud, we're not actually giving we're not producing. All we're doing is complaining. So let's produce. Let's produce great music that glorifies God. TV programming, kids programming. And at something I just want to say, Trent, that you said, I don't remember how you said it, but you were basically saying it's one thing to just complain about programming or technology. Like for a long time, people were saying, you know, these phones, this phone I've got right here in my hand, this is such a terrible terrible device and it's an open door to all these horrible things true by, by the way fact check true but it's here to stay the internet's here to stay the satellites are here to stay there's there's nothing you can do about that so god how can you use me to use these things that are not going anywhere for your glory how can we turn this thing around i think that's the most important thing that we could be doing in terms of putting our money somewhere so in saying that, that's what you guys are doing with the, the yeah. this kids programming, which I think is absolutely necessary and wonderful. But how can people watch it? People are like, oh, yeah, but what, how do I watch that? I turn the TV on. Where do I go? Yeah. Well, well, to support the, the creation of it, it's a crowdfunding. We're trying to raise $2.5 million. We're, we're off to an incredible start. Uh, go to watchbrave.com. Um, we've created all these tier, tiered 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 rewards. Um, so depending on how much you, you get, you can get anything from, you know, um, 20, 20 books to your grandchild appearing it as a guest star in the TV show and, and going to the red carpet premiere. There's a lot of fun experiences, products that you can get whenever you donate. So it's not just like you're, you're giving our money. And it's a one-way street. Um, and, and, and so, okay, let me, let me, we're $2.5 million. That's going to do 20, 20 episodes where anybody that gets behind the project is going to have lifetime access to all 20 episodes. We're given, we're putting five episodes available for free on YouTube, Rumble, any streaming pl platform for the general public. But for the people that are either A, members of our Freedom Island Book Club at Brave Books, or B, support the, the fundraiser, we'll have access, we're, we'll, we'll have the app, you know, that you can watch through your TV and, and all that. Oh, I see. So if you become a member of, of, of Brave, actually, I don't think we discussed that this, uh, I have in the past, but for new listeners, uh, will you describe what you mean about being a book club member? Yeah. So the, um, if you go to bravebooks.com, you can, you can join our book of the month club and you get a new book every single month. It starts at, at our very first book and you work your way through the overarching narrative that we're telling. Um, each book teaches a different, you know, important value. Uh, and then, so for all of our members, they'll, they'll have access through, through the app behind our paywall to watch all 20 episodes. Um, and, or even if you're not part of the, the subscription, if you get behind the, the fundraising, you'll, you'll also have, have access. Got it. Yep. Okay. Got it. And so is that how you'll continue to do it in the future? Like assuming there will be another season or whatever you want to call it? Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. And two point five million dollars. This is this is the bad part about being a visionary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody's got good ideas. I tell you what, we need to do. Let's create a kids program. Like that'd be great. What? How much do we need? I don't know. Maybe twenty or thirty thousand dollars. They're like, no, you need two million dollars. It's daunting. Yeah. It's it daunting. is. It, it is. Um, you know, our our prayer for this show is that it's it's just the best show for, for, for the age range that we're, that we're doing it for, which is like that, that three to seven, four to seven age range. Um, it's going to, it's obviously going to have, it's going to be set in this really cool tree house. You're gonna have Kirk and the puppets. You're going to have this super computer that, that um, it, for it's 20, 22 minute episodes, about 15 to 17 minutes of that will be live action back and forth with, with some fun animation mixed in. But then, 
seven to eight minutes will be animated storytelling. So Kirk will be reading um, a book and, and the book will come to life. And so, you know, if, if, if we're going to create a show that, that, that really captivates kids' imagination, it's going to have to be extremely well done. And, and it does cost money, especially when you get into the, the animation aspect of it um, and the production and all that stuff. So, so yeah, w- w- our, our budget is 1.4 million for the actual production of the TV show, but we don't want to just produce it. We want, we have a marketing strategy that, that we're super excited about that we're going to go. And that's what the other 1.1 is for is, is to go and target, you know, just, families that are watching shows on YouTube that are not good, not uplifting and, and let them know about adventures with Iggy and Mr. Kirk and why they need to be watching this, this show instead and just go and recruit them into, into good programming. And, and it, because what's the point, what's the point of just, just creating a show just, just for us in our little bubble. We, we want it to go out and, and, you know, our, we, we want this to be an iconic show that's a critical part of American culture for, for decades to come. And mm. we have a plan that we think will, will achieve that. And, and so, yeah, that's, that's cool. What, yeah. You know, it's an interesting thing here, not to get too, I don't know, philosophical, but like sometimes I find that the world, let's see, how do you want to say it? The world understands things by common sense that sometimes I find that Christian people, uh, I don't know why I fight against. So l- let me give you an example. <laughs> the, w- the world knows by common sense that if you want to change a generation and make kids, you know, se- uh, 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 under their definitions, they would call it sexually liberated. We would call it sexually confused, but the world may call it liberation. They may say, hey, we want to we want to change society. And a major part of that is that that will break down heteronormativity, whatever you want to call it, all right? Not to get too, too, I don't know, philosophical or academic in that terminology. Well, the world just knows if you want to do that, probably the best way to do it is put it in kids' TV programming. It's like yeah. they just they just get it. You know what I mean? Or, or the, the devil is like, you know what we should do? We should create music that just glorifies sexual liberation. We mm-hmm. should create films that just do, and they just do it, and it just happens. And then sometimes Christian people can be like, oh, that's just entertainment. You know, it's about the gospel. It's not about entertainment. Yeah. It's about preaching the gospel. It's not about spending your money on kids' TV shows. We don't need, and they, for some reason, there's like this, this all of a sudden their common sense is completely gone away because they're looking for a scripture reference to support the idea of creating kids TV yeah. programming. It's common sense. The devil knows it. The world knows it. The devil's followers know it. Why don't we know it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're speaking to the choir. It's um, it's been pretty mind boggling. Like where once you, I guess once you see it, once you see the, the effect that these shows have it, you can't unsee it and it's so obvious, but some people just have a hard time seeing that that's important. You know, they can, they can watch TV, you know, it may just be that different generations, but they can watch TV every night and just not acknowledge that, that, that TV is not, it's not just entertaining them. It is changing them. It is changing the Mm -hmm. way they view things and desensitizing them and all sorts of things. Um, But yeah, you know, with, with the books, I felt like we were, we were fighting in the culture war. You know, we were landing punches and, you know, um, I felt like we were having an effect, but I didn't feel like we were winning. <laughs> you know, I do not feel like we're winning. And um, and I want to win. I As much as I like a good fight, I want to win this culture war. And I think it is winnable. I do. I, and I think the tide is starting to turn um, in just sort of the cultural zeitgeist. Parents are... S- Parents are sort of, they're starting to know the score and they're waking up a little bit and we have an opportunity to really win. Um, but I think if we're going to win, we got to do it on the TV screen. That's just where our culture is. We're a, the screen is just such a critical part of our culture. It's become a part of how parents parent, how, how they, how they get stuff done. You know, they'll put kids in front of the TV, you know, and that's just the, the nature of, of our culture right now with a lot of parents are on dual income and, and the TV is, is, is a, is 
a part of our 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 homes and and we can't just feed our children to the wolves and and have these ideas start to make make a way into their into their minds at an early age there has to be tv programming that parents can trust and that builds their character gives them a foundation of truth so that so that they're prepared as they get older and mm-hmm. and um yeah you know we've only been around for a little over two and a half years and sort of getting into tv is a little bit of a it happened quick may a lot of people think it's it's very aggressive and we're sort of um what what's the getting out in front of our skis is that the phrase um, yeah that's a good one <laughs> yeah. biting off more than you can chew <laughs> yeah by, there you go <laughs> And, uh, and so, but, you know, we just, we felt like, we felt like it's just a critical moment and we're, and we, we didn't want to wait any any longer. And, and, and this, this, the vision for the show is is so good and, and we're, we want it to happen and we're, we're going to need, we're going to need the support of the, of the body, you know, it's just the way it is, but, but the body, the body needs it, you know, it's, it's going to be good for both sides. Yeah. I hear you. You know what? I want to win too. I don't want to just be in the fight. I want to win and, <laughs> and, and see um, people come to Christ. People, um, I want to see their eyes open. I want to say out uh, to be, you know, saved from this world of darkness into the glorious light of, of the kingdom of Christ. This world is just going absolutely insane. I agree with you that we are beginning to see a little of the turn of the tide. And the reason I think that is because a lot of my, unsafe friends, some are atheists or agnostic, or some just, you know, don't recognize that Jesus is the son of God, whatever, but they're not into the Christian stuff. They're not conservative, uh, meaning politically conservative. They're not big on tradition, but they're beginning to say, okay, okay, enough is enough. You know, almost like, all right, wait a minute. The old world wasn't so bad. Maybe I was wrong about Christian civilization. They're looking, they're looking for hope and they're looking for um, order, you know, and, and I think that, I think that we can win. Well, there's, uh, there's a whole eschatological thing here. I'm not going to get into that, but just (laughs) thinking logically, I think that we can win because the ways of God actually make sense. And what the devil wants is to confuse everyone so that things actually just are destroyed and they actually don't make sense. So to me, it kind of see, I don't know if you're biting off word you can chew or not, but it, it seems like a great time. It seems like it's the right, right time to strike. I'm really personally glad you're doing it. So people go to watch brave. Is that what you said? Watch brave.com. Yeah. Watch brave.com. That's right. Watch brave. And it's almost like you, if you give, is there a minimum? So if I give $5, am I then a part of the crowdfunding? Yeah. So, um, there's a $25 tier in order to have lifetime access to the show. I think it's a hundred. Um, and, and, and there's some other things that come, come okay. with the hundred dollar tier, but yeah. Okay. So, th- so there's no minimum, but if you want the lifetime deal, then there's a hundred bucks. 25 yeah. is the lowest tier. And yeah. as long as you have access to the internet, you can watch it. YouTube rumble, right. whatever. Yeah. Everybody should try rumble first. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Hey, Really great work you're doing. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on the show to chat about it. If there's anything else you want to say before we jump off, go, feel free to go for it. No, one thing that resonated with me that you were talking about is is the you know we can't just complain and and I, I in my mind I take it a step further. I think if people complain and don't do anything, it actually has a significant net negative because it desensitizes us and the people around us to what's going on. So, so if you just complain over and over about things like drag queens, story hours and all that stuff, eventually you become numb to it and it is, it becomes normal. And I think we're better off just not even on, not even complaining. Just, we need to act. We need to be, we need to be wise. We need to be bold and we need to do things. And and that that's the path. I think complaining is only complaining is that's how you lose. Mm. You know, that's what y'all did with uh, Kirk Cameron, right? When he's yeah. do, he was doing his uh, story hour thing, you know, we had him on the show talk about it. I mean, I, I, I told him and I really mean this. I think I think Kirk is kind of leading the way and showing us how to do this. 
um, because he does it with such grace and and such love. But he's bold. He's but he's like, you know what? I'm just going to go do this thing. And you guys did that together. I thought that was a really brilliant way to do it. So I'll give you an amen for that. I love it. Uh, thank you so much for joining the show. Best of luck. I hope that the Lord blesses it. And uh, I, I will become a member so I can see this great programming you're going to do. You know, it better be good. Don't mess <laughs> around with it now. Don't play <laughs> with my emotions. It better be good, Trent. <laughs> it's going to be great, John. I really appreciate you having me and all the support that you've given us. So it, it means a lot. Thank you, John. Awesome. Have a great one, brother. You too. Read the Bible.